Here it is, we're wrapping up April, and really this is the first time we've had you on to talk about insects in winter crops. Tom, what's going on? Well, we can talk about the lack of insects in winter crops right now. Uh, I was at a couple of canola field day meetings yesterday. Uh, that crop looks beautiful. It's the best I've seen in years. And as I was inspecting it, it was hard for me to find any insects of any kind feeding on it. Um, and the same is true, we're going to be starting our wheat tours in the next few days as well. Uh, really haven't seen a lot of uh, insect activity there. I, I always caution them to, to continue to inspect their crop, make sure that they don't get surprised by something, but so far so good. What I think has happened is we've just had beautiful growing conditions, wet, cool, fall, spring mm -hmm. and it, uh, things like diamondback moth that will get into canola uh, tend to do a little better when we have a mild winter and probably kind of a drier winter but at least for right now things look great so with all that with the with the winter crops looking so well should producers start thinking about summer crops absolutely uh, in in the cases of wheat or canola uh, a lot of times they can come in with a crop afterwards and plant it. Uh, there, there should be some intentions on planting sorghum this year. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's going to be a lot of cotton, but one of the good things that we've seen about sorghum over the last few years is that, uh, that uh, we've got tools in place to manage sugarcane aphid, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a big deal anymore like it was back in 2013 to 15. So um, we've got tolerant varieties, we've got some insecticides that can control them when it's needed. Um, and farmers are more experienced with it, so they're not uh, afraid of it anymore like they were for a while where the, we could see such disasters. With the winter crops, if insects do make their way back in, when, when is it too late to, to, to spray for those? Uh, well, with, with armyworm, it's not too late, even as the, the heads are filling mm -hmm. um, with things like that. Um, and with canola, the same kind of issues could happen um, with the, af after the pods are, are uh, filled out and the, mm -hmm. and the flowers are, flowering's done. Uh, we have seen in the past, it may, actually kind of a year like this, where variegated cutworm came in and started feeding on the pods mm -hmm. pretty seriously. So, um, you know, these crops aren't out of the woods yet, but uh, there's definitely pot potential and there's definitely a reason for producers to, to watch the crop and protect it if they need to. So what kind of resources are available for the producers when it comes to identifying those insects? Well, of course, we, we make recommendations that we update annually uh, for insecticide products that are registered. But uh, I've also in the last couple of years developed a fact sheet on caterpillars in canola, mm -hmm. caterpillars in uh, small grains, aphids in canola and just finishing what one up for aphids in small grains that talks about their biology and everything but also how to scout for them. Okay we'll keep an eye out for that and you can go to our website sunup.okstate.edu for more information about those fact sheets.